right, so what I'm going to try to do today is show you to how to make fresh pasta and show you that it's much more simple than you might think. And this could potentially be a Tuesday night dinner. So um, I'm sure you've all seen people make pasta by hand. You take your flour, you make the little well, you put the eggs in it. I, I don't have time for that. Um, that is not my, that's just not how I do it. Um, my well always breaks and then the eggs just go and I, it just, it's just, that's daunting to me. So we're gonna use a food processor. It comes out great. It's a great way to do it. Pretty much almost everybody has one. So this is really simple. It's four ingredients. We're gonna start off with two cups of all-purpose flour, dip and sweep. You don't even have to be like perfect about it. All right, we're gonna add three eggs. I think in the recipe I said to put the eggs in first, but I don't think it actually matters. It's all going, it's all going out the same. That's the dramatic. Yeah, just, just put it all in. You know, they've been making um, pasta for thousands of years before we had any kind of real technology, so you can totally handle this. All right, olive oil, you measure with your heart. You don't actually use any kind of a spoon. Salt, it's gotta have a little bit of salt. There's always somebody who's watching their salt, so don't put so much. I'm not gonna come to your house and check on you, so put what you're comfortable with. And then really, we're just gonna pulse it. The machine's gonna do all the work. That's it. And it'll come together. Give it a couple pulses, this way it starts to clean up the sides. It's gonna form a little ball. That's it, done. Pasta. Pasta's done. <laughs> so you're just going to take this out. We're done with our measuring cups. That was that. We're just gonna take it out and put it together. Now, if it doesn't come together, um, you can always add a couple little drops of water. You know, if you've ever made like a pie dough, it's kind of the same thing. Just add a couple drops of water till you get it um, where you like it. Now, we live in southwest Florida, and according to my hair, the humidity is about 900% today, so there's no danger of the dough being too dry today. So this is plenty, plenty moist. Um, I would rather have it be a little bit on the wet side and then work flour into it as I go because if it's dry and you're trying to get the moisture into it, it's really, really much more difficult. So if you have any worries about the consistency of your dough, try to get it on the more wet side of things. So that's it, that's our dough. So this is just gonna rest for, you know, 15, 20 minutes right on the counter. Um, you just need to let it rest because now you've activated the gluten and it will fight you if you start trying to roll it right now. So, what I'm gonna do is just let this sit. All right, and what I forgot to do was leave one piece unrolled, so I'm just gonna re-roll this one. So we've got, again, I have technology on my side here. And I brought my 30-year-old KitchenAid, and I have the little attachment. Now, if you have the little hand-cranked machine, bust it out, you know, bring it out. Um, Get your kids, get your friends. You know, I was saying that if you're inviting your friends over for dinner, let them roll out the pasta, you know, have them come over, hand them a glass of wine and tell them to get to work, you know. Um, so, what you're gonna do is you're gonna cut your little ball of pasta after you've let it rest. You're just gonna cut it in four. It's gonna make it a lot more workable, okay? Cut it in four. And it goes pretty fast. You don't have to like worry about it drying out. It's not, it's really not that fragile. And then we're just gonna work a little bit of flour into it. And then just flatten it out just to help it get through the machine. So this is, your, your pasta machines are always gonna come with different attachments. One is just gonna be a smooth roller. And then the other ones are gonna be the ones that you actually do the cutting with, that you'll see the little rollers on the inside have like little notches at different, you know, different widths. 
So you're going to start off with the smooth roller. That's what's going to get us to this point here. So you just take your little piece of dough. You start off at the largest notch. On mine, it's number eight. So it's the, it's the widest opening. I'm going to just crank it up. I'm just going to run it through. No worries. I will put a little bit of flour because it's a little bit wet. And let me turn this off while I'm talking. So what you're going to do is you're going to fold it in three, like a book. We're not making puff pastry. It's not going to be like an envelope fold. We, you don't want it, because it's going to be too thick. If you, if you fold it in three like this, it's going to be too thick. So you just want to fold it, just like fold the two ends in, like that. Otherwise, it'll be too thick, and it'll, it'll really struggle to get through your machine. And then you're going to do it so that, the, so that the open part is up. And then you're just going to run it through. So this step. We're going to do about six to eight times where you're just folding. You give it like a quarter turn so that the open part is up and you're just running it through your machine. And what this is doing is you're working in flour, you're working up your gluten. And this is the main step right here. So that's all there is to it. Obviously, if you were cranking this by hand, it would be a little more action packed, but technology is wonderful. So what you're gonna find is it's gonna get smooth. You see it's getting like nice and smooth and satiny. So at this point I've run it through a couple of times. It's, I've got the nice consistency that I want and I'm just gonna let this hang out on the side and I'm gonna move on to the next one. So you kind of assembly line it. So you do all of them to that first setting and the same thing, we're just gonna add a little bit of flour, gonna press it out. And just go right through. Same thing. Add the flour if you think it needs it, if not, leave it out. So what I did before I got here, hang on, let me turn off the machine. All right, I don't want to compete with this thing. All right, so what I did this morning was I made the pasta dough, I let it rest, I came back a little, a little bit later, and I rolled them all to this first setting. And then I just packed pack them with some paper in between, and I just set them aside, and then I came here. Because I didn't want to fully cut the pasta and then bring it here, because it's a little fragile, and I didn't want it to just be like a little box of shattered, you know, little noodles. So. I stopped it here, and then when I got here, I rolled these down until I was one, um, you know, one number before I want to be. So now I can go ahead and pick these up and run them through for their last setting. So, I'm, so you start at eight, and then what you're going to do is you're just going to drop it down one number till you get where you want to go. Now with fresh pasta, always, always bring it a little bit, when you think it's thin enough, make it a little bit thinner. Um, I find that especially with like hand rolled pasta, people tend to make it a little bit too thick and it's, I don't, I don't really care for it. I like, I like the, the real, real thin fresh pasta. So if you, do the, if you do this by hand, I mean you can do this with a rolling pin if you feel so inclined. Um, I will not be joining you. I will be here with my mixer. So now I just dropped it down to seven. So I'm just gonna run it through to seven. Gonna go to six. Five. And you see it's getting a little bit longer with each pass. Four. That's it. So now I'm just, I'm almost at the thickness that I wanna be. So if you look at it, it looks pretty thin. I, I definitely would like it a little bit thinner than that. So these are all now at four. So now, let's say, we're making dinner. We'll get our water boiling. I think it takes longer to get the water boiling. Um, so if I could. The initial setting that you ran it through there six or seven times, but then when you started. Right, then it's <laughs> once. Yep, you just need to go once. Yep, thank you. So, yeah, that initial setting, that widest setting, you're going to go through probably six, seven, eight times, you know, as many times as you need till you get it looking, you know, nice and really, really smooth. I mean, don't worry if like the edges are a little wonky, you know, no one's going to know. Um, but that's, 
that's the step that's really kind of giving you your structure. After roll it, running it through one time. So our pasta, I did not salt the water yet because my water's not fully boiling yet. Um, don't throw your salt in the cold water. It really will wreck your pan. The bottom of your pan will get like these little pock marks in it. And I've seen it, it's a true thing. So don't do that. All right, so at this point I'm at four. I'm gonna drop it down to three and I'm gonna start running these guys through. So if you have a giant island like this in your kitchen, you can totally lay it out. Um, if you have like one of those laundry dryers, they work really well for, for holding onto your pasta. Um, your old school grandma, I guarantee you, put it on her bedspread, like and you know, had a special little tablecloth that she would put on her bedspread to lay out her pasta. So whatever works for you. Um, the little, those little laundry, those little collapsible laundry dryers that have like the little sticks, those work great. If you're making like, you know, five pounds of pasta like I am. If you're just making a pound of pasta for yourselves, you've got plenty of room on your counter, don't worry about it. Don't buy like those little trees and stuff that they sell, you don't need that, you really don't. So now I, I'm dropping this down to three and I'm just gonna start running these guys through. Three, oh, I wasn't paying attention. Sorry about that. So we could just, we can re-roll this. I just, um, it caught in the corner, I wasn't looking. I was looking at my phone. So let me just go. They might have been drying out too much here. All right. All right, last one. Right, so we're done with this attachment. Hmm? I have it set to full, to yeah, to 10. Yeah, because I may as well. I have it, I'm gonna go for it. So this is the setting, this is like a little, um, kind of like a fettuccine, it's like a little wider noodle. I like the wider noodles, I do have one that's a little bit thinner, um, but I, I just feel like, I don't know, I like the wider noodle, it holds on to more sauce. So now we're gonna go ahead, switch the attachments, goes in really easy. Thank you. And like I said, if you don't have, you know, if, if you only have like the smooth roller or you only have a rolling pin, at this, you know, at this point, you're just gonna roll it up and slice it with a knife at whatever, um, whatever width you want, and you're done. But we're gonna, we're gonna go for it. And that's it. That's it, pasta's ready. Try not to drop all of it. And then again, I'm just gonna lay it out. Oh, this guy didn't get rolled out. All right, we're just gonna let it roll out. Now at this point, you know, I try not to like transport it. And I like to make it the day of, I don't try to save it. I don't try to dry it. Um, to me, the, to dry it, you know, I'd rather just, I'm just gonna eat it right now. I'm just gonna throw it right in the water and let's just have something to eat now. And then that's it. And then these all just get run through. Now at this point, you might have some trouble when you're, when you're running your pasta through, the, the little noodles may not separate. So that's, a, that's gonna let you know that your um, pasta dough is too wet. You're, you'll just get like indentations. It won't quite, you know, it'll be like a little accordion. It won't quite separate. So if you get that, um, you can either try to work some more flour into it or, you know, like the, the next pieces, you know, rub a little more flour into it or just leave it out like this and just let it dry out just a little bit. I like to have a nice straight edge when I go in. It helps keep it from like shooting sideways. All right, so now at this point, it's just a matter of 
having our pasta water and our, and our sauce ready. So the pasta is only going to cook for a few minutes. So I'm going to get the sauce going so that this way I can just take the pasta right out and get it right in the sauce. So the sauce that I'm making is something a little bit um, less traditional. Um, I don't know if how active you are on social media, but um, you know, cottage cheese is really having its moment right now. And um, they're putting it in everything. They're using it for everything. Um, if I never ate cottage cheese again, I would be fine with it, but this is super delicious. Um, as far as just like eating it you know, out of the container, not my favorite. But what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna blend it. So what I do, like when I get home with cottage cheese, I just put it in the food processor, I blend the whole thing and put it right back in the container. And then when I'm cooking, instead of using heavy cream, I'll just take a couple spoons of the cottage cheese and it's just ready to go. And you're getting way less fat. Why can't I open this? You're getting way less fat and tons more protein. It's incredible. I couldn't believe it when I first tried it. Um, and again, this is just going to go right in, right in the food processor. And you definitely want to blend it. You do not want to use it, you know, all curdy like this. All right, so we're just going to put a little salt and pepper. Cottage cheese has plenty of salt, so you don't have to go crazy. Um, you know, you want to keep in mind all of your ingredients, you know, when you're, when you're building your flavors. If the ingredient that you're using, you know, you're using soy sauce or something, yeah, don't go crazy on the salt. Maybe taste it before you, before you finish salting it. And we're also adding Parmesan cheese, which is also going to bring a lot of salt to the party. So you definitely want to just not go too crazy with it. I have some chopped garlic here. Garlic is another ingredient that you measure with your heart, not with the recipe. Um, this is fresh garlic. Um, jarred garlic is not welcome in my house. I'm not a fan of it. I think it's weird. I don't like it. Um, what I like to do is I actually buy the, pe the peeled garlic. I'm willing to go that far. I buy the, the little bag of peeled garlic and then I just put the whole bag in my food processor, chop it up, and then I, I pour a little, enough olive oil in it just to make it like you know, scoopable, and then I put it in a jar, and it just sits in my fridge for a couple of weeks till I finish cooking with it. And um, so I think it's, you got the best of both worlds. You got the convenience of the pre-chopped garlic, but I don't know, that, that garlic has just such a weird flavor to it. I'm not a fan of it. All right, we're gonna throw in a little extra Parmesan cheese just in case we don't have enough cheese. I'm gonna save some to put on top. And I think that was it, right? I think that was it for the recipe. I'm not forgetting anything. I like to forget one thing every time, but no, I think I got it all. Yeah, parsley will hit right at the end. Where's my top? And then this is just gonna, we're just gonna take this, give it like 30 seconds, a minute. Let's just scrape down the sides real quick. And this you can definitely have made in advance. And then we just heat it up at the last second. And that's it. And that's all there is to it. And this is gonna make you a really nice, creamy, Alfredo-like sauce. And it tastes, you know, it has that very fresh, milky taste, kind of like mozzarella cheese. I, I really like it. I think it tastes creamier than a cream sauce. It has a great consistency. It sticks to the pasta. And like I said, it's got considerably less fat and um, tons more protein. So I'm sure you're like your kids are onto this because if they're on TikTok, I'm sure they've seen it. So this is just going to go right into the pan, cold. Now, this is a pretty fragile sauce, so you're not going to boil this. Um, it's going to be really, really low heat. You're just warming it up. So you want to be pretty gentle with it. But this is just, you know, when you have that. And then, of course, you know, you can totally build on this. Get some, throw in some cooked chicken, some broccoli. You know, you can have, you can make a whole, a whole thing out of it. So now I've got my pasta here. I'm going to throw in some salt because the water is boiling now. I think I finished your salt. So I just have this on a really low setting. And I'm just gonna start 
dropping in my pasta here. So now get the biggest pot that you have, because you really want this to have some space, because otherwise they're just gonna like stick together. Don't overcrowd the pan. It only cooks, in, it only takes a couple minutes to cook, so you don't have to feel like I've gotta get this all in the pot. So I think I could do about half and half because I brought my giantest pot. All right, and just be gentle with it. Just, it's all gonna drop to the bottom, don't worry about it. As you stir it, it'll start to rise. And then my sauce is right here. I'm just waiting for this to heat up. But pretty much anything that you could throw in here, I mean, you could put vegetables, you know, spinach would be great, broccoli is always a good option. But some diced chicken, you have a, little, a quick little chicken alfredo. All right, so the pasta is already starting to come up to the top. And that's it. I mean, this is start to finish. I'm at half an hour. So, and I was dawdling a little bit, and I made more than you're probably going to make. So, probably, yeah, I'd say maybe six minutes. It's not, it's not a lot. And I ultimately, you just have to taste it and see. But it's already, you know, floated to the top. This, um, it looks about two cups. So I think it would be good for, you know, maybe a pound of pasta. We're going we're gonna to stretch it out a little bit more. But um, it depends on how, you know, how saucy that you like it. All right, so we're just... Now, the reason I slid these two together is because I like to take the pasta right out of the pot and get it right into my sauce. I just skip the colander entirely. Um, this is a big pot to be walking around with, too, but because um, I want to take some of the pasta water with me. Pasta water is a really critical ingredient in really making a successful pasta and sauce because the, the water is going to be salty. It's going to have all, like a lot of starch that came out of the pasta, and that's how you're going to adjust the consistency of your sauce. All right, so this is already heating up. I can already smell the garlic. These are so fast. Induction cooktops are so fast if you have one. So I'm just gonna go ahead. I'm not throwing this like uh, against the wall or anything like that. That's weird, I've never cared for that. But you just wanna just taste it. It's, you know, it's however you like it. I mean, I'm not going to tell you how, what consistency you should like your pasta at. Now I'm just going to take some tongs and just start dropping it in here. No, this is probably like one minute out, but since I have a second round to go, it'll keep, it'll keep cooking in here. All right, so now I pretty much got everybody out. And I'm going to throw in the next. No, no, it's welcome to come. I'm probably going to add more. Because that sauce is so thick. You know, that cheese is so thick and, and creamy that I'm probably, that's why I have a ladle here, because I'm probably going to add a little bit of the pasta water to it just to adjust it to, you know, a nice consistency. All right, and that's that. And then these guys I'm gonna start mixing up. So this I'm just really now, I'm not really cooking it, I'm just kind of holding it. I have it on like super low, I have it on like warm, just to keep it, just to keep it warm. So now I'm, I'm probably stretching this sauce out a little bit more than it's meant to be. So 
so it won't, coat, it won't quite coat the way it would, but I'm gonna just throw all the pasta in. And again, it's about another two minutes. And just keep it moving, like regular pasta, even if you're cooking dried pasta, you wanna go in and stir it now and then, because otherwise you'll just get like a ball of pasta. But I am gonna add some pasta water to it. Just to loosen it up, because the Parmesan has, tightens up. It's pretty garlicky. I don't know if you could smell that. All right. So again, this has almost come up to the top. You know, once it starts to float, you're pretty much almost, almost up to the top here. I didn't get my boil back is what happened. Ideally, you would wait a little bit in between just to regain your boil, but I'm rushing it. So, ah, give it a little taste. It's almost there. And then, of course, you know, there's so many different things that you can do with your pasta. I mean, once you've, once you've rolled out your sheets, you can just take the regular rolled out sheets. You can make lasagna, manicotti. You have a million different uses there. Um, you can make ravioli. You know, you just take your little sheet. And again, ravioli is not something that you need a little machine for. They make like little molds where it looks like a little ice cube tray. And then you would just lay your sheet out and... Um, and then just kind of like put like little indentations on it, fill it, you know, put the cover on it and then just cut them up. So that's super easy to do too. And, and you don't need a little machine for that either. You can totally 100% make that by hand without having to buy any special equipment for it. So it just all depends on how, how ambitious you're feeling. And this is it. Dinner's ready. And then you go to work the next day and you're like, oh, I made fresh pasta for dinner, no big deal. You know, as you're eating your leftovers. I eat all my lunches at my desk, at my sad desk lunches. Then the parsley. Then I just have, I found a little spider, so I'm just gonna come in here and pick up all the stragglers that are at the bottom of the pool here. And that's it, it's done. I'm shutting everything off. Let me come in here and just give this a better toss. And again, now at this point, we're just gonna adjust with any more pasta water if we need it. And then maybe throw in some more cheese. Oh no, there's too much Parmesan in this, said nobody ever. <laughs> nobody said that. Like we're in this far. There's no turning back now. So you see how the cheese just totally coats the noodles? And really, I mean, you're, this would have been a ton of cream if we had made this with cream. And you know, a lot of times Alfredo sauces will call for flour. So I noticed the gluten-free, you know, pastas here. So if you were trying to make a gluten-free sauce, you, would, you could totally do it with this because it'll give you the consistency and the thickness without trying to figure out how to do it without the flour. So this is it. As easy as that is, that still might be a little bit out of my wheelhouse. So I just did a, oh, no. I might give it a try though. But I did super simple, as you all know, I stick with. Um, on page five in the book, I did a melon prosciutto and mozzarella salad and mine was true to my form is super easy because it's basically the hardest thing was cutting up my cantaloupe and my honeydew. Did that, I tried the melon baller. Did not work so well. I hate that. Gave that up and just chopped up into little pieces because it was just much easier to do. 
So very simple, as you can see, um, dump the, the container of arugula in there, then threw in my chopped up um, cantaloupe and honeydew, bought the mozzarella pearls, so I didn't even have to cut that up, just yeah, smart. super simple. And then Alyssa helped me, we just did cut up the prosciutto, didn't even use a knife, just tore it apart. And then it's a super simple topping of olive oil, drizzle olive oil. It calls for sherry vinegar, which I couldn't find, and they said a good substitute is red wine vinegar. That's what it is. Salt and pepper to taste, and a little basil there is in there as well. So that, as you all know, goes with me. It was super simple. Um, just a, And I thought, what a nice thing, summertime. Um, simple, it goes with pasta because it's light something to do. Um, so I just wanted to try something different. I've never had this before. I found this one and I thought I'm going to give it a whirl. So there you go. I'm turning it over to Willard unless there's any questions. Hi guys. So I didn't uh, present anything today, but I do want to just bring up a couple of options. You've already brought up the fact that you have people in your life that are gluten free. Some of us also have people in our lives that are diabetics. Pasta is not one of the best things for diabetics. There are a couple of alternatives if you want to try them. Two common ones that you can find at most of the stores around here are chickpea flour-based pasta and lentil uh, flour-based pasta. And you can even buy lentil flour or chickpea flour. I don't know if you can get it at Walmart, but you can always get it online if you yes. need to and make your own pasta if you want to. But those are two options if you have somebody who's gluten-free or diabetics. These still have a lot of carbohydrates, so they're not entirely car are diabetic friendly, but they have a lot more protein and a lot more fiber, so they can have some smaller batches of pastas, just don't go overboard with it. So any questions about some alternatives if you don't want to uh, deal with the wheat pasta? I got this book um, a couple cooking lessons ago at the Friends of the Library cookbook, Thing. And this is a Rachel Ray recipe that is um, that I used for the um, tuna casserole. That's um, at the beginning of this cookbook. And um, I I followed the recipe, except I did not put in nutmeg because my nephew is allergic to nutmeg. I did not put in hot sauce because. We don't like things real spicy, and so maybe a little bit bland. Um, the milk that I used was 2%. It wasn't whole milk. I don't know how big it, oh, Spencer, are you rolling your eyes at me? <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, and um, I used three of the little cans of tuna, which I think is like 15% instead of the 12 in the recipe. And um, one of the things that I liked in her, in her recipe, Rachel Ray, was um, when you're making the sauce, um, you, you have the butter and, and uh, uh, olive oil melted, and then you put in a little bit of flour so it thickens it, and then you whisk in the wine. And in, in her recipe, she said, um, how many cups of wine? One cup of, uh, a half a cup of dry white wine or a few glugs. So <laughs> I noticed you. One for you, one for me. So you just, yeah, glug, glug, glug. I didn't do the glugging. I, I followed the <laughs> half a cup. So anyway, I hope you enjoy it. It's just something different than the typical meatballs and, and pasta.